No, no, not kidding. So, you seem to be quite an expert on uh, military history. Yeah? What are you? I am the doctor. A doctor of what? I am not a doctor. I am the doctor. The definite article, you might say. And, um, and, and what are you a doctor of? Oh, a great many things. Uh, temporal engineering. Temporal engineering. Metaphysics, archaeology, history, quantum mechanics, astronomy, medicine. Well, the things one must know. Quantum mechanics. It hasn't been invented yet. Then how do you know about it? Well, I'm a genius, you see. Yes. And uh, you say you're a genius on that of quantum mechanics. To what extent? You're a genius with it as it is, or can you extrapolate from it? It's hmm. fine word, Mr. Benpart. I can, in a sense. But let's just say for the moment to preserve my essential modesty, and I'm a modest man, I'm a concerned man, given the events of tomorrow, let us say that I'm a tinkerer. Now, back to our concerns about Waterloo. You realize, of course, that in sending Gerard and Grouchy off on a wild goose chase to separate Blucher from the English army, you're doing precisely what they're doing. They're doing a split, and you're doing a split. You're doing a mirror image. Now, as an intelligent man who began in the 1790s moving vast cannon emplacements around Italy, chasing the Austrians in circles, I'd have thought the first thing you'd have done would be to consolidate. I've never consolidated. Why not? Why have you never consolidated? Because I like to keep moving. Yes, but you see, one can always keep moving. There are many instances of people in the past who have kept moving. But if you don't, if you keep moving, the supply lines get broken. I can think of instances later than you. There's a man very like you with a small moustache, started as a painter, bad end, got himself. Anyway, he kept moving. His supply lines, lines ran out. Ran out of gas. Gas. Gasoline. Petrol. Petrol. It doesn't matter. I'll come back to it. Things that we will encounter later on, things like uh, fuel and things like that. But what is concerned, what must concern you, Monsieur Bonaparte, is simple things like bullets, things like food. And so, basically, I would hesitate. I would, at any rate, be skeptical about the basic premise of simple movement. There is mobility. It's very good. All that we read. In your academy, people like Alexander, people like that, kept moving, kept moving, kept moving, but at the same time were totally aware of the essential need for supplies. Hmm. Did you go to a military academy? I've been to some. I've been to Santos, Annapolis. I've been around. So you're mobile, in a sense, yes. I'm mobile not in a spatial sense, but in a temporal sense. A temporal sense. Are you being religious? <laughs> not remotely. Not temporal and spiritual. Spatial. Spatial. Yes, don't think of Earth and God. Think of Earth being here and time. I always think of time. Time is essential. Time is of the essence. Quite. Essence. French for petrol. Interesting. No, but um, the essential fact that I must get across to you, Monsieur Bonaparte, you have lived a certain period of life, you have anticipated events, you have, in a sense, in certain battles. Let's go back to your early campaign in Northern Italy, for example, the Battle of Arcola, one of your early great victories. At that stage, you understood that the basic system of attack and defense in the 18th century, all the battles of Marlborough, you know, the English, um, not so great manufacturer, no, the, the general who won Blenheim, Ramillies, with Dinar, Malblake, it was basically the French and the English. Whereas you moved cavalry around, you moved around, you outflanked, and you outflanked with your cannons. However, you learned from the past and you saw the future. You created the future. Now, just imagine, just imagine the possibility, Mr. Bonaparte. If you said simply of anticipating the future, one could go to the future and check it. Go to the future and check it. Yes. Do you know my future? Yes. It gets a bit sedentary. <laughs> what, I... I sit? Please don't let me sit. I know you have a problem, but uh, it's not so much that you necessarily have to sit, it's that you're in one place. France, 
No, not that. On the throne of Christ. No, not on the throne of Christ. You are on an island. A big island? And no, quite a small island. Think of yourself as a Prospero who will never return. No? C'est triste. Tristan. Un désordre. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah.